Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 13th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. ESET and Tragos Security released an analysis of malware that was found to disrupt power networks in the Ukraine. The malware was originally found by ESET, who named it Industrier. According to ESET, the malware was responsible for power outages in the Ukraine in December last year. Only a single substation was affected by the attack at the time, and Tragos suggests that that the attack was more of a proof of concept to test the capabilities of this malware. Unlike prior malware found to attack industrial control systems, for example, Black Energy 2, which was responsible for the attacks in the Ukraine in 2015, this new malware is very modular. It loads specific modules where each module is written to attack a specific industrial system control protocol. The malware uses HTTP for command and control. The HTTP requests are sent to a proxy in inside the company's network, and then Tor is used to protect the destination of the requests. The command and control channel can be used to execute typical commands, like executing uh, commands on the infected systems, copying files on the infected systems. However, the malware does not offer a built-in command to exfiltrate data. This could be installed later, but it also shows how this particular malware focuses on disrupting the system, less on exfiltrating information. An attacker would initiate an attack against a power company by loading a configuration file specific to the company's network, and then the attacker is able to, for example, de-energize power lines, essentially turning off power for part of the network, or initiate what Tragos calls an eye-landing event. In this scenario, power is cycled quickly multiple times to trigger the power network's self-protection mechanism and disconnect the system from the larger power network. According to Tragos, this could lead to multi-day power outages. Due to the modular structure of this malware, it would be pretty easy for the attacker to adapt the malware to different power systems. For example, the protocols used in Europe and Asia are somewhat different than the protocols used in North America, but essentially just by swapping out the respective control protocol module, it would be possible to essentially use most of the same infrastructure to then attack power systems in North America. And Alien Vault features a write-up of MaxSpy, which as the name implies is spyware for Max. This spyware is offered with a spyware as a service model, which means that the user does not have to install any infrastructure. Overall, the malware does provide basic spyware features for free. For example, the attacker can retrieve screenshots or can listen to the microphone, intercept keystrokes, or or even intercept files as they're uploaded to iCloud. These basic features are offered for free for a premium version that does cost an unspecified number of bitcoins. You get additional features like, for example, file retrieval, or you can encrypt the home directory, or the premium version may also come as a signed binary, which of course makes it easier to trick a victim in into installing it. And Basile today wrote a Storm Center diary about volatility. You may have heard of volatility. Volatility is a very popular tool to perform memory forensics. But uh, like many advanced and sophisticated tools, its command line interface can be difficult to learn for a newcomer to memory forensics. Volutility provides a web-based front-end to 
volatility and makes memory forensics more approachable. In order to use the tool, a memory image has to be acquired and loaded into the tool. Now there are various volatility modules that are now really just a mouse click away. For example, you may retrieve a list of uh, processes running on the machine at the time the memory image was acquired. Also the full command line for uh, these uh, processes and also network connections uh, that were established again at the time the memory image was acquired. And if you're listening to this podcast during your morning commute and are looking for a companion podcast for your afternoon commute uh, this afternoon, I'll uh, be on the CyberWire podcast. I'll be talking about IPv6 and why you probably shouldn't neglect it. And by the way, my two-day IPv6 class will also be offered end of July as part of SANS Fire. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.